From the EPR Creation Studio, this is Unconquered with Doc Staples. As always, this podcast brought to you by EPR Creations, bringing you the best of internet marketing and website development for an affordable price. And by Louis Marquez of Keller Williams Realty of Jacksonville, Florida, Shenandoah Real Estate in the Research Triangle of North Carolina, and Garage Makeover is the number one garage remodeling company in South Florida. I'm going to do a pretty quick one here today. This is the Southern Miss preview episode. And frankly, this is a game that Florida State should win. I think everybody knows this at this point. After the way Florida State looked on Sunday, that there's not a whole lot of mystery to that. Nevertheless, this is a better USM team than I think might be appreciated. And on a short week, it's, it is going to be a challenge. It is something that Florida State's going to have to come out and actually take care of business. This is not an FCS team. This is a this is a pretty good group of five team. This is not a this is not a team that can't play. I went and took a look at their first game against Alcorn State, and yes, it's Alcorn State, <laughs> no doubt. That's that's not a that's not a strong strong team, not a strong opener for them. Nevertheless, when you look at what's on the field for USM. They've got some players who are going to give Florida State some trouble. And specifically, they are explosive on offense. That's a good offense. And, you know, they're coached by Will Hall, a guy who spent time under Mike Norvell and and understands how to how to coach offensive football. He's, he's a good quality coach, understands how to coach complementary football. And they're going to do a lot of the same sorts of things that Norvell does in terms of being able to manufacture running game and simplify the passing game for a quarterback uh, to, to get the ball downfield and, and, and do so with a lot of safe throws. So, and, and they've got playmakers. I mean, Frank Gore Jr. is a guy, you know, ran for almost 1,400 yards last year. And, you know, he runs an awful lot like his dad. Now, I don't think he's, at, he's as good as his father was, but that doesn't really, that's, that's a pretty high bar to, to, meet, to meet. And he is, uh, he's a quality back. And, you know, they've got a second back who, actually flashed pretty well in that first that first game uh Dreek Clark I think I think is the name uh and he flashed some some serious wheels a guy that that has got some real burst and both of those guys if they get out into the open field they can cause you more problems than LSU's backs did uh that was one of the things that coming into the LSU game you you felt pretty good about is that even if LSU's backs break into the open neither of those guys is a guy like Benson or or uh or Hill you know, one of those guys for Florida State who can take it and go. And and we saw that actually against LSU. They had some opportunities to, to house some stuff, but they just weren't able. Those guys weren't weren't capable of it. I actually think Southern Miss's backs are every bit as good, if not better, than what LSU has. And and as a passer, I think their their quarterback, Billy Wiles, he's a, a transfer who came in. I think based on what I saw against Alcorn State he's a more natural thrower and more willing to pull the trigger on, on things and throw receivers open and all that than Jaden Daniels. And they've got some, they've got some speed on the field at at wide receiver. They're, they're going to be able to get a few plays I would expect against Florida state's defense. This is going to be a challenge in that respect. Now I do think, I mean, they've got a pretty experienced offensive line. Uh, They've got five guys who returned, who, who, started started some games last year and uh at the same point even though they're experienced they're not all that good i think florida state can control the line of scrimmage and should do so pretty significantly the the real question is how much time wiles is going to have to throw even on some of the quicker stuff that they do because i do think that offensive line is going to have have their hands full they're going to have serious problems with what florida state's able to give them up front and that's really where this game needs to be controlled and won uh, they can limit the running game and then get after the quarterback there and and make it much more difficult for Wiles to be able to uh, to test them downfield. But with what I expect them to do, I expect to see a lot of jet sweep type stuff. They ran a lot of that against uh, against Alcorn State, a lot of jet sweep type running game and, and different things off of that. And then a lot of uh, seam type stuff and testing the safeties. I think they'll go after Florida State safeties and linebackers and largely avoid testing the, the the corners outside too much, uh, trying to use the middle of the field, which is really where Wiles looked stronger 
as a thrower in this game. And he showed really good touch and really good ability to locate uh, on time and throw guys open between the hashes and on a lot of those sort of in-breaking and, and just down the field on the inside part, inside the numbers uh, kind of throws. So those are things that Florida State's going to have to be conscious of. I do think this is a game where you just let your, your front four eat and you – you know, you play a lot of your standard quarters, keep those safeties in the play and, you know, rotate into some th- in, into some single high where you where you need to in order to, to close the middle so that they can have less room to work in the middle of the field. Uh, just kind of rotate between that stuff and, and you should be fine. But I do think, like I said, uh, USM is going to find some ways to score some points here and there. They'll they'll be they'll be pretty decent in terms of of testing that that secondary if florida state shuts this team down in the passing game that's that much of a better sign for the season because coming off of a short week uh banged up a little bit coming out of the out of the lsu game you know after bullying a team in 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 a physical opener coming out if you're able to come out and refocus and shut down an offense with some of the fast playmakers and a quality quarterback who can locate uh in the opener or in the, in the follow-up to the opener, you feel pretty good about that. Now on the other side of the ball, I think Florida state's going to kind of be able to do what they want. I I don't think that, uh, that USM defense is especially good. They've got a couple players. Uh, their, their nose tackle is, is pretty good. He's a 300 pounder. Uh, they've got some good linebackers, but they replaced a bunch of guys in the secondary. And even Alcorn state had some guys, making some plays and running away in the secondary, which is kind of a bad sign. And uh, just in terms of overall talent level on the defensive side, Florida State should be able to block them and should be able to run away when, once in the secondary. And this is a game where if I'm, if I'm Mike Norvell, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to basically do a lot of run game stuff up front because I don't think they can, I don't think they can actually hold up against against the offensive line and I'm trying to shorten this game and run the backs and keep three four backs happy while spreading it to some of the guys that maybe aren't going to play quite as much in a couple of the bigger games uh once you get to once you get to garbage time type stuff but I think that's where this is going to go I think Florida State should win this game comfortably I think offensively like I said this is a game where you can run the football you should be able to run it and work on on balance. Uh, get both Benson and and Toafili going early, and then move immediately to Hill and uh, and the rest later in the game, and try to shorten this game a little bit by running the football and just get out after comfortably controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides. Uh, you know, I do think there are going to be opportunities for for your uh, your playmakers on the outside in this one this is another this is a game where you know if you want to get a guy like Destin Hill untracked this is an opportunity for that but i think this is where you know maybe early you use Wilson and and Keon Coleman uh and their advantages early their their ability to create mismatches early on a couple of those first drives but i think pretty quickly you start to try to do some of that other stuff and you know it's not exactly you don't want to you don't want to take this defense lightly you don't want to take this game lightly but you still feel like you can do a lot of the things to spread spread the ball around to some guys that maybe didn't uh don't have opportunities in certain other in other cases in this one because of how you can con- control the line of scrimmage and because of some of the matchups that you're going to have against say the nickel or the safeties and, and and corners in this game so uh yeah i think you can control it up front Run the football, got plenty of play action and RPO opportunities off of that. You run your offense and spread it to the guys that you need to make sure get better by uh, by touching it and, and continuing to get college experience at this at this level. I mean, again, I'm thinking of Destin Hill and, and Rodney Hill and some of those guys. Those are guys you're going to need to have online to further take the next steps forward uh, beyond what you showed against LSU. And I think that's what you want to do here. You know, as we wrap this podcast, there's, uh, you know, I guess we come to prediction time. And I think ultimately, even though this is a short, short game week, 
even though I do expect FSU to be a little maybe sluggish early on, I think this one just ends up being one where even even a pretty good USM offense just doesn't have the firepower to keep up over the course of four quarters. Uh, and Florida State's sort of able to score, if not at will, on most of its possessions uh, through the first three quarters and, and get out of there with something like a 49 to say 49 to 20 type win in this one. I I do think that you're going to see a lot of young guys in the second half on defense and you're going to see probably USM get some, get some points in there. So we'll say uh, 49, 24 actually in this game Uh, and a comfortable win opportunity to move into conference play next week. Uh, with some guys rested after that, after taking off a fourth quarter in in a in a game off of short rest. Well, like I said, this was gonna, this was going to be a short one, not a ton to cover. Uh, yeah, we'll wrap there. This has been Unconquered with Doc Staples. I'm Doc Staples. Thanks for listening. I'd like to thank my advertising partners, EPR Creations. Louis Marquez of Keller Williams Realty in Jacksonville, Florida, Shenandoah Real Estate at shenrealestate.com and the Research Triangle of North Carolina, Garage Makeovers in South Florida. And then, of course, if you have not stopped by the Unconquered Podcast shop at unconqueredpodcast.com, you can buy stickers and all sorts of other gear. Go ahead and do that. Always helps support the podcast. Thanks also to those supporters over at Patreon, where I post video analysis and field questions for the podcast from supporters. I'm especially grateful to those above the dynasty level, that is Andrew Garrett, Brian Leininger, Jonathan Kennedy, Lee Caswell, Travis Smith, Tyler Kashishki, Dave Blair, and Bert Bertoldi. If you've been enjoying this podcast, please leave a five-star rating over at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts, post us on social media, and tell a friend. This has been the Unconquered Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Staples. Thanks for listening. I made this.